Hello 3E and welcome to Unit 3. Our topic today, the best buy. Our goal? I know how to recognize which package will be the best buy at a store by examining the unit price. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to take a look at which package to buy in a store um, if there's a selection available. So when you go into a store, most items well, many of them anyway, are sold in different size packaging. You can have small jars of peanut butter, you can have big jars of peanut butter, and as a general rule, the bigger the package, the best the buy. Uh, however, be a little bit wary of that. Uh, I have a, a sticker here. A lot of places in the supermarkets or, or in places like Walmart, when they put the sticker on the shelf to show you what the price is, and you can see this is natural peanut butter um, that it says it's $2.99 for the package that it's in. So um, you can see also on this uh, tag it has a spot where it says unit price and unit price is 18.7 cents per ounce. So it gives you the unit price here. Okay, the unit price here means that you pay almost 19 cents for every ounce of peanut butter in the jar. And I want you to notice that the, pr that the, the size of this jar is 16 ounces right there. So the unit price is 18.7. The whole jar costs $2.99. And it's not like you can buy only little pieces of the jar, so you still have to pay that $2.99, but if there's a different size jar there, you might want to buy it instead of this one because it could be the best buy. Uh, unit prices are always a dollar or cents amount and may be given for various units. So here's some examples of units that you might find. There's the kilogram, the liter, the package, say you have um, packages of Kleenexes, uh, you might want to find out how many or uh, how much it is for one package if you're buying say like 12 in a big bundle. Uh, gram or milliliter if you're buying liquids. Uh, sometimes it might be given to you per hundred gram or per hundred milliliter. And if you happen to be over in the States, you're going to see things that are in ounces, pounds, or even gallons. Okay. Uh, so we're going to use this example, and this is actually true real life thing that happened to me today. Uh, example one, Mrs. Caldwell was buying cat food at Walmart today. I really was, honest. Uh, she was looking to buy Imes Hairball Care Formula and had a choice of two sized packages. One package was $8.49 for 1.41 kilograms. The other package was $15.49 for 2.4 kilograms. She took out her iPod and did a quick calculation before choosing which to buy. Which package do you think she bought? So let's make this calculation. Remember when I said to find the unit, the unit rate or the unit price to find the unit price, we need to take dollars and put it over whatever unit it happens to be in. And if you're making a comparison, you want to make sure that both things are in the same unit. And that's fine in this particular one because both packages were listed in kilograms. 1.41 kilograms and 2.4 kilograms. So here is, and I'm just going to erase that highlighting. I'm going to highlight the first package. One package was $8.49 for 1.41 kilograms and the other package was $15.49 for 2.4 kilograms. So we're going to make two calculations here and then compare when we're done. So um, let's start with the little package. The little package. And we remember we want dollars per unit. So in this case the little package is eight dollars and forty-nine cents per and the unit here is in kilograms and it's 1.41 kilograms. Oop, that doesn't look like a K. Let's try that again. 1.41 kilograms. 
Now, when we actually make that division, and when I say division, that's all this is, is 8.49. We're dividing it to see how much one kilogram costs. So when you punch this into your calculator, you have to do the top, hit the divided by key, and then the bottom. So 8.49 divided by 1.41. Remember, you plug it in top to bottom. And that's $6.02. 602, $6.02 per one kilogram. Okay, now let's take a look at the big package. The big package. And we need the price of the big package, 1549. Whoops. 15 dollars and 49 cents divided by 2.4 kilograms. And if you plug that into your calculator you get six dollars. I've already done this so I'm just going to write it down. Six dollars and forty-five cents per, that's what the slash means, per kilogram. So which one do you think I bought? Well if you take a look this one here has the lower unit price. So that is actually the one that I decided to buy. She should buy the little package because it has the lower unit price. Okay, let's take another look. A case of Coke sells for $12.99 for 24 cans. What is the cost per can? Now, they're not asking us to compare it with anything else. They're just simply asking us cost per can. And this is kind of like the cost per package that I told you before, except in this case, the package is a can of Coke. So, cost per can, remember for unit rate, we want the price divided by the amount. I'm going to use the word amount here this time, or the amount or the unit. So, <clears throat> Our cost in this case is $12.99 and our amount is 24 cans. Plug that into your calculator, you do $12.99 divided by 24 and you will find out that that turns into $0.54 dollars or 54 cents per can. Now, here's another what is the best buy question. For example, number three, um, 500 grams of sugar costs 75 cents. One kilogram costs $1.40. 1.5 kilograms costs $1.95. And two kilograms costs two seventy. dollars Now, remember, our unit price we want in cost per um, per whatever it is. And in this case, it looks like kilograms. We could get it in grams, but three of them are in kilograms and one is in grams. So the first thing we have to do is change this 500 grams, whoops, change 500 grams into kilograms. Now, there are a thousand kilograms, or a thousand grams, 1,000 grams per kilogram. So since this is 500, this must be half a kilogram. So I'm going to write that as half, and maybe it would be best to write it as 0 0.5. This is 0 0.5. That's not a 5. 0 0.5 kilograms. So now we've got them all in kilograms. So we're going to find the cost per kilogram. So there, I've numbered and set up all of these divisions and now I just have to plug them into my calculator and get what the cost per one kilogram is. So 0.75 divided by 0.5 gives us $1.50 per kilogram. Now if I go over to number two, number two is already given to us on a cost per kilogram basis because whenever we divide by one, we're going to get the same amount. So this is simply $1.40 per kilogram. Down here, 1.95 divided by 1.5 is 1.30 
dollars per kilogram. And then $2.70 per 2 kilograms, go 270 divided by 2, and you get 1.35, again, dollars per kilogram. Which is the best buy? Well, let's take our highlighter. We're looking for the smallest number, 150, 140, 130, 135. Looks like this has got it. And so that's the third one, 1 1.5 kilograms of sugar at $1.95. Okay, now lastly, this is a slightly different situation. Our example four, the Toronto Zoo has a general admission price of $28 and children's admission is $18. There is also a parking fee of ten dollars. A two-year membership at the zoo for a family of three for a family is three hundred and seventy dollars, which includes parking. How many times would my husband and my two children and I need to visit the zoo in order to make it worth buying a membership? Um, I didn't put the and I in there. How many times would my husband and I and my two children need to visit the zoo in order to make it worth buying a membership. Well, let's see how much it costs without a membership. So without membership, um, we need to buy two adults. So the adult rates would be um, 28 times 2 which equals 56. Uh, for children, it would be 18 times 2, or 36. And then, of course, we have parking, which is $10. So our total for one trip to the zoo would be 56 plus 36 plus 10, uh, which gives us $102 for a trip to the zoo. Okay, that seems like a lot, um, but if I'm going to go back more than once, I can pay the $370 for a two-year membership, but is it worth my while? So how many times does the regular rate go into the measurement, the, sorry, the membership. That's what we're being asked to find. How many times do I have to go to the zoo in order to make that $370 worth my while? Well, let's take that and figure it out. I need to take $370 and divide it by that $102. And if I take 370 divided by 102, I get approximately 3.6 times. Now, you can't go 0.6 of a time. So, but if I went three times, I still wouldn't have my full cost of my membership. If I go four times, I've definitely got my money's worth and then a little bit more. So I have to round up. So we would have to go four times to make a membership worthwhile. And you have some questions on this to work on and that concludes this video.